Now I'm having a wonderful guest, Jan Christopher Hobak, a man who worked many years in archival uh, Munich and uh, now is the head of the UCLA Film and TV Archive in Los Angeles and he's responsible together with the Outfest Legacy Project that we have under as the Andern from 1919 in a restored version here in the festival which is uh, of course a hint that it also could have been done by some Germans and this is what the Queer Academy wants to dive into keeping films visible. When we put together the 30, 30, 30 program, we realized already how many films we could not get. I came up with a list that I wanted and many of those films we didn't get. And so this is one thing, um, just having deteriorating material of films. <coughs> but the other thing is that many of the rights were not available anymore. Meaning, up to families that re-heterosexualize their queer brothers, uh, children, after they have died of AIDS and don't want to have to do anything with the oeuvre they left, and which we think, of course, it belongs to us. So uh, we have like two things. One is the physical restoration of film, and the other is the rights situation. So I asked young Christopher to come up and give us an insight in how UCLA and the Outfest Los Angeles Legacy Project got together and work and operate. So it's a great pleasure to be here. Um, Thank you, Wieland. I uh, also want to acknowledge my colleagues, Bob Hawk, who of course is one of the founders of the, uh, and I'm a member of the board of the Outfest Legacy Project. And I'm also proud as a mother hen that Alice Royer, who is my student, uh, former student, is now on the Teddy jury and also the archivist for the Outfest uh, Legacy Project on Outfest side. <clears throat> More than 10 years ago, uh, in 2005, UCLA Film and Television Archive partnered with Outfest to create the Outfest UCLA Legacy Project for LBGT Moving Image Preservation. Today, with over 35,000 holdings, the Legacy Project has established itself as a leading archive for LBGT media preservation. It is one of the largest publicly accessible collections of queer films in the world and a vital resource for students, faculty, research, and researchers interested in LBGT moving images. Back in 2010, the Archive and the Moving uh, Image Archive Studies Program at UCLA organized an international conference with the Institut National Audiovisuel, INA, in Paris, about the transition from analog to digital archives. That conference made clear that migrating the archive's moving image content online for educational and commercial purposes should be given the highest priority. Increasingly, the public at large expects the archive to be what we call performative, that is, visible, excuse me, visible online, allowing users to explore their own without the archivist as gatekeeper. Archives and libraries unable to provide online real-time access to their collections, we believe, uh, will be sooner or later rendered obsolete, the intrinsic value of their collections uh, declining commensurably. In 2011, then, the Archive launched its redesigned website, which, and the old one was actually from 1996, grew out of the Archive's film exhibition, The L.A. Rebellion, Creating a New Black Cinema. 
Extensive research, documentation, analysis, preservation, and restoration had been necessary to prepare the film program, which contributed to the online content. But the new website also significantly expanded resources and provided interactive features, such as a blog. The Rebellion uh, webpage features biographies, filmographies, and oral histories, um, as well as many uh, Project One films, the first films of the filmmakers. And uh, so, and then we also have a lot of other uh, documentation on that site, much of which is actually downloadable. Then in 2012, we were approached by the producers of the groundbreaking LBGT news and public affairs television series, In the Life, whether we might be able to take their archive and give it an afterlife online. This was a great chance since they encouraged us to think big and offered the, the funding to make it possible. As media film historian Steve Tropiano notes of In the Life on our webpage, of this that this variety talk show hybrid was unique. Quote, before In the Life, there had yet to be a comedy, drama, or nonfiction series on commercial network, broadcast cable, or cable television focusing exclusively on the lives of gay men and women. The landmark coming out of Ellen was still five years away, and we would have to wait until the turn of the century for the debut of a national cable channel of our own very own, namely Logo TV. End of quote. At the height of its run, the independently produced In the Life aired on about 200 public television stations across the United States. The series was a multiple Emmy Award uh, nominee and re the recipient of several LBGT media awards. However, with rising production costs and LBGT representation in mainstream media making notable gains, a somewhat controversial decision was made in 2012 to end production. Its creators and the board of directors sought a suitable home to ensure that the uh, long-term uh, series would live on. As donated to the Outfest UCLA Legacy Project, the In the Life collection constituted over 9,000 physical holdings, including one-inch video reels, beta cam, digibeta, VHS, mini DVD, DVDs, CDs, as well as digital files on external hard drives and on servers. Following the end of production, the In the Life packed up and shipped 20 years of production materials, uh, necessitating the archive to reconcile their internal data with the actual physical holdings. From this process, the project team created 9,500 records in the archive's inventory system, a first step towards formal cataloging of the collection. Challenges in this process include reconciling the 200 broadcast master uh, episodes from holdings which represented rebroadcasts, B-roll, un unedited footage, uh, and segments created for the web only. As part of the collection deposit to UCLA, over 32 banker's boxes of In the Life production papers and records were also donated to UCLA Library Special Collections. And that material has proved extremely useful in fleshing out episode content details. The paper collection represents a very significant research resource, portions of which have already been scanned and placed online. The complete episodes are now all cataloged at the item level in the Mark 21 format, fully described, containing subject analysis and local genre headings. In developing these uh, uh, catalog records, careful attention was paid to the um, to the current LBGT Library of Congress controlled vocabularies, which in some instances seem dated 
or too clinical for user-friendly and, welcome, and a welcoming environment. Since the In the Life collection was donated with copyright to UCLA, our de desire has been to place complete episodes online for free public access. Conceptual planning for an online portal to pr pr present the episodes to the public include tagging functions and user comment options to create patron engagement and to build an active user community around the collection. And here is a screenshot of the complete live portable portal. The archive recently updated our existing website to Drupal 7, which has now established mobile and tablet functions for the In the Life portal. Here's another screenshot of the live portal in the Browse by Season mode. Currently, we have all 20 seasons available online for streaming. That's as of uh, a couple of months ago. In addition to the videos, the website portal includes pages to host scholarly essays, uh, to highlight existing research, writings and resources of interest to related to LBGT issues and topics in order to provide external context to the uh, In the Life episodes. The site went online last summer, and here is a screenshot of an episode landing page. You can see examples of our episode metadata that we are including on the research portal, but we also include a link to the episode's formal bibliographic record in our archive uh, uh, catalog. Phase two of the project, which is going to launch later this year, will expand these episode pages to incorporate user tagging and comments. Our online plan from the start was to utilize YouTube to host the videos, as In the Life had already established an active user base on that platform, some video postings having over 20,000 views already. This was an active and engaged constituency that we did not want to lose. Given that UCLA Archive already had a university-approved YouTube channel, proceeding along this route seemed a natural fit. Unfortunately, things were not as easy as we had anticipated. While the In the Life collection was donated with copyright, the episodes themselves uh, often contained uh, quite a bit of third-party material that was licensed for limited broadcast use only, and those licenses have expired, again, rights issues. Um, Examples include music for the In the Life episode 204, uh, In the Life Goes Country, the song Midnight in a Perfect World listed at the bottom of the screen has been flagged for removal. In some cases the content scrubbed by YouTube was such a major part of the broadcast episode, uh, the final show would have been dr too dramatically altered to be acceptable. Here you can see 15 instances where clips were blocked by YouTube from the In the Life episode focusing on the 25th anniversary of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. So while we have tried to present complete shows, there have been losses. Um, nevertheless, I dare say the website constitutes the largest online collection of LBGT material anywhere. Part of the problem is that when In the Life broadcast these uh, segments originally, they were considered news and therefore uh, 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 not in the, necessarily in the public domain, but you could use the material without clearing rights. Whereas now, it's no longer news and it's treated as if it were entertainment. And so, you know, uh, shows like Saturday Night Live, Live and stuff, they want like, hundred million dollars for a 30-second clip, so can't afford that. But because we do control copyright, we are also able to license content. For example, the archive was approached by a production company that was creating a segment surrounding the Freddie Martinez murder <clears throat> for the Discovery uh, Channel series Investigation Discovery. The te television production first intended to utilize the footage of Freddie's mother, 
So we were able to locate the mother's release, which we had in the papers, granting rights to an interview for this and all future productions. Production was also interested in repurposing stills and additional footage from the original story for their new program. The screen grab of the No Games Here footage <clears throat> that was a part of the request is a powerful reminder of the relevance of this historical content and its future potential. The Archives in the Life Project has certainly been one of the largest digital access projects to date that was not uh, without a, significant, a fairly significant learning curve. However, in closing, we hope that you will visit the site in the coming, and, and in the coming years when we incorporate user tagger functions, also contribute to this site. In, in addition, we will also be curating and posting full interviews, outtakes, and historical B-roll footage as this special content is identified and cataloged. So, that's our Outfest Legacy Project, which of course we are doing preservation non-stop on feature films, shorts, amateur films, working together with our Outfest partners. But uh, at this point, I think our really one of our greatest accomplishments is getting this material online so you too as well as everyone else around the world will have access to this material. Thank you very much.